Good evening. We're talking, of course, about Dorian. Not expected to affect us here, but we're also talking about our weather in the Labor Day weekend time frame for New Orleans. So we'll get into that in a second. But first, an update on Dorian, which has 150 mile per hour maximum sustained winds, a strong category four. You can just see the symmetry here. You can see it just churning over these warm waters, maintaining that really, really unfortunately healthy look. And as it continues over these warm waters, it may touch category five status at some point tonight or maybe tomorrow. It's moving west at eight miles per hour. Pressure is at 945 millibars. That's unchanged from earlier today. Notice the National Hurricane Center forecast again takes it to some northern Bahama Islands as we head into Monday and then into the kind of early part of Tuesday. And it begins the turn as we head into that Monday and Tuesday time frame. So showing you where it's going to be heading. It looks like it will be moving off to the north and I'll show you why in a second. And then as it moves off uh, toward the Carolinas, it may get close to the coast of South or North Carolina as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. I wanted to show you that the path, if you haven't seen it yet today or maybe from earlier today, it has shifted off to the east. So the center here uh, of the forecast path is off the coast of Florida and actually the margin of error just now includes parts of Northeast Florida. It does not any longer include the Gulf of Mexico or really much of the Florida Panhandle at this point. So that turn is expected and then eventually a turn off to the northeast, perhaps as a slightly weaker uh, storm by then, maybe no longer a major hurricane, which is category three and above, but maybe a category two. Keep in mind, though, the intensity forecast will be shifting. Here's why we're seeing the steering that we are. High pressure is building in, and that's what's keeping it on this westward course right now. There's a trough of low pressure that will draw it to the north, and meanwhile, we in Louisiana are more under the influence of hot high pressure, which will kind of uh, protect us and also keep us hotter and drier heading into the upcoming week. Putting this into motion, you can see that the high here will retreat and kind of weaken off to the east, and this trough will begin to pick Dorian up, and it looks like direct it out to the northeast eventually while we continue under the influence of the other high building in from the west. You can see the computer models in fairly good consensus with this model uh, idea to bring it off to the north and then to the northeast. And a couple of the global models, here's the GFS keeping the center offshore on Monday, get, getting very close to South Carolina as we head into Wednesday, and then keeping it right along the coast of the U.S., maybe right over land or perhaps just offshore as we head into Thursday and finally brings it away from us by Friday and Saturday. So this is a storm, unfortunately, that we're going to be talking about for many days all the way through Thursday and Friday. And again, next weekend, it will still be off the coast of the U.S., it looks like, moving away. As we head into our Euro model forecast, a little bit different. It really intensifies it here in these warm waters near the Bahamas. It brings it off to the north, very close to the Carolinas Thursday and uh, Wednesday even for South Carolina, and then eventually brings it off to the northeast as we head into next weekend as well. So again, something we will be talking about for many days. A lot will depend, of course, on how close it gets to the Florida coastline as opposed to farther away. Here in New Orleans, 94. That was our high today. Feels like 98. Could be a lot worse because our humidity was cut back a little. Here are current temperatures. Here are current feels like temperatures. Only one spot reporting 100 over at Gulfport right now. And as we look at our dew point temperatures, those have been on the lower side as well in the 60s as opposed to 70s. So I noticed a bit of a break in humidity today. I'm thinking you probably did too, but that changes tomorrow. Our live radar scene is quiet. Our evening forecast brings our temperatures through the 80s, and then tonight we'll have 70s for lows, mostly clear skies. And then tomorrow we will have an increase in some showers and storms, about a 40% chance. And we'll also keep that into Labor Day too, about a 30% chance on Monday due to some low pressure to our south, bringing in some more moisture and adding uh, rain chances, uh, which will be going up just a little bit, but you can see then going down rapidly by Tuesday and Wednesday. It's